Man, it's so glad to be back to he- Well, I can't say I'm not surprised. Helldivers 2 and Arrowhead have been under very heavy fire during the time I was gone, taking a small break from Helldivers 2 and enjoying other games, like Elden Ring, hence the videos. A lot of these complaints that I've noticed have almost exclusively been because of nerfs. It's gotten so bad to the point where the only thing I hear about in the subreddits and main discord, which I have slowly over the week stopped going into because of all the negativity. But in this video, I'm going to be talking about why nerfs are actually not bad sometimes and if they're well thought out. And I am most likely going to be crucified for what I'm about to say, but it is what it is as I feel like this is something that needs to be said and also because I need to start uploading something again. This will most likely be my first and only video talking about something like this as I generally want to entertain or educate people. But let's get into the video. First of all, we need to talk about what makes a nerf. Because I've seen a lot of different cases where people see bugs that slip through testing and are seen as nerfs, which they aren't just for your information. A nerf is when the developers intentionally reduce effectiveness of an item, whether it is an armor set, weapon, strategy, and perk, or enemies, you name it. Nerfs can vary from big to small to barely noticeable to something you wouldn't pay attention to if you use an item as it really is intended. Hell Average 2 has had a lot of varied nerfs. Some good, some bad, some really bad, and some downright questionable. Nerfs are there in order to balance out a game's experience, to make said game less one-sided or monotonous, and to give more variation. But this is only achievable if the developers manage to keep a good balance between enemies and allies. And that is something the developers have been struggling as of recently. I'm not hating on the developers or anything, but there have been some nerfs and additions to the game that have been very questionable, especially in contrast to how the enemies keep evolving and are practically stronger than ever now. Nerfs are good, but only if done right. And this goes for both players and enemy side. For example, take this bad boy, you know, the weapon I made the video of a while ago. This is one of the very rare occasions where I thought a nerf was necessary and healthy for the game. Not only was the railgun very ammo efficient, it practically had no weaknesses or downsides to run, aside from the need to be precise, which let's be real, 90% of all stratagems need this. The weapon had full armor pad even at safe mode and boasted an insane damage with the unsafe mode. The weapon was so good to the point where that was the only weapon I saw for like a month. It also started to ruin online lobbies where people were basically forced to run the weapon or else they would get kicked, which created a situation where newer players were struggling to get the weapon and to farm up to get the weapon, but at the same time, you couldn't run anything new to test stuff out and made the game very monotonous. That was until the weapon got nerfed. A bit too much? Yes, the nerfs were needed, but the only thing they needed to do was to make the weapon only pierce with the unsafe mode on. On the other hand, the nerfs that some enemies got, mainly the charger and the nerfs to its head, to give you the ability to quickly dispose of them with one to two recoiler shots, but keeping the ability to shoot the legs off and killing them that way, was an amazing example of a nerf. The nerfs were implemented to serve a single purpose, to balance out a game experience in order to make it not too easy, not too hard, and that is something Arrowhead manages to do sometimes. And now some of you may be thinking, Arrowhead should only buff. That's the best way to balance. And to that I gotta say, have any of you ever played a looter shooter? Maybe even a Souls game? Then surely you must know about the Flame of the Red Mains, the Horfrost Storm, anything that comes from Warframe or Destiny 2. The biggest issue with balancing isn't the fact that our own weapons are bad, but that the enemies are way stronger. With the new update, Escalation of Freedom, the game was introduced to some new and familiar faces from the first game, the main one being the Impaler. You love them, you definitely hate them, but in the end, the enemy is insanely unbalanced at this state. Sit down, young one, for I am about to tell you a story. A story about a little game called Helldivers 1. Helldivers 1 was a simple game, a simpler time. And during that simpler time, there was once an enemy known as the Impaler. The Impalers are similar to Chargers, but instead of charging at you head on, they instead burrow their heads into the ground in order to attack you with big sweeping strikes. But in doing so, leaving their heads wide open. 
Sound similar? That's because the same enemies are in Helldivers 2, but 10 times worse. See, in Helldivers 2, not only are the Impalers designed to cut off your escape routes, unlike in Helldivers 1, which did the opposite and instead tried to attack you head on, but the Impalers are designed in Helldivers 2 so that every goddamn time they attack you, you fall on your ass flat instantly. Seriously, who thought designing an enemy made to cut off escapes and permanently keep your ass ragdoll was a good idea. <clears throat> on top of that, a lot of the times, these impalers are almost completely hidden out of sight, sometimes on the other side of a mountain, forcing you to somehow make your way over to it in order to kill it. You're most likely going to come out with one or two broken limbs and an empty stim pack. This aspect of the game I personally cannot defend. See, I don't care about the weapons being weak. I don't care about strategies being weak because I synergize with my team. You, you know, apes together strong. But I cannot defend an enemy that permanently puts you into a state of ragdoll, has what it feels like an unlimited range and no restrictions to said range, and feels like an absolute nightmare to deal with at every stage of the game. The Impalers in Helldivers 1 were bad, but in Helldivers 2 they are bad. Overall, the devs need to deal with these imbalances with the enemy and some weapons and as it stands right now the game is kind of slowly going down that hill of an entire team struggles to beat a mission with a good synergistic kit i don't mind the game being hard in fact i love games being hard hence why i do stupid challenges on them and now the official buff divers patch has been released for about a week now and i just want to give you my points on what i think about it real quick since this video was made and produced before during and after the buff divers patch was even announced or released a lot of this stuff is a bit outdated now but i'm gonna give you guys my quick thoughts was the buff divers patch any good yes it was very good in fact it's alleviated a lot of the pain points of the game and things that i dislike such as rocket devastators and rockets for the automaton faction as well as some annoying parts about the chargers as well as bile titans etc etc there's still a decent amount of issues with the game such as with ragdoll physics but i'm sure that they will fix it but overall update good but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I do apologize for being somewhat negative in this video, but I kind of had to get this off my chest as I feel like a lot of people don't know that only buffing is also unhealthy for the game. Buffing items is just as unhealthy for a game, if not worse, and the developers need to find a good middle ground. Hopefully, as for my next video, I'll be doing something that I feel like a lot of people will enjoy. I will be playing a Helldivers 2, but an AI chooses my loadouts and strategies. Nothing could go wrong, right?